Hey guys, Axel Noah here, back with another exciting video for you guys today because today they have released the fantasy teams for 2021. Now, I'm big into my fantasy league. Every week, I normally go in and make some changes. And as you can see on screen already, here is my team for the 2021 team. Now, before I get into that, there will be a uh, link down below to my comp that I'll be running this year. So if you guys want to join that, there is an incentive to joining it other than just having some fun. At the end of the year, whoever wins the comp will win a prize. I'm thinking something like three NRL 2021 trading card packs. So you'll win three packs of trading cards if you win the um, My Fantasy comp. If you come second, you'll get two packets, and if you come third, you get a packet. There'll be free shipping, all that stuff. All you gotta do is join the um, link that I have down below to my t uh, to my fantasy comp, and you can win three free 2021 packets of trading cards. That sounds like a pretty cool deal to me. You know, there's, it doesn't cost anything to join, and it's just a bunch of fun throughout the whole year. I'll be kind of going over my fantasy team, who's in the lead. I'll also be doing this for tipping. There'll be a different video. Um, so if you guys do want to join, do want to get possibly some free uh, 2021 trading card packets, then join my comp linked in the description. But let's get into my team here and why I picked some of the players I have. Now this year is a little bit difficult because there was $9.8 million to spend. I'm pretty sure last year there was $9.9 .9 million. I'm not 100% sure if that's correct or not. I feel like last year was a little bit easier to pick teams, but this year is a little bit harder. I've had to make some adjustments to my team. I do actually have on my phone, I was going through each day when they were releasing the um, fantasy teams guide for each team, like who I have in mind. And I'll quickly go over them while I do this as well. So let's start off with the hooker role. I've chosen Jaden Braley here just because he has a pretty good average for a very cheap price. If I go onto the prices, it was only 410k. And for a player that can average 50 points when fit and healthy, that's really good. Um, the other players I was looking at were like the obvious ones, Damian Cook, Harry Grant, Happy Cow, Farisau. Uh, there was Tom Starling, Reese Robson, Jake Turpin, Josh Hodgson. They were all thoughts in mind. Um, Jake Turpin could have a good year. Reese Robson could ha have a good year under Todd Payton. But I've chosen Jaden Bailey just because he is the cheapest and I think possibly the most reliable player there. And the Knights should have a decent team. And if not, they'll probably be doing a lot of defending, which is beneficial for the hooker role because of a lot of tackles. So that is why I've chosen uh, Jaden Braley. The other hooker position obviously would have been Brandon Smith, but he was way, way too much for that, um, you know, about 200,000 difference. Next, we go into the front rows. We've got Mo Fodawaka, Victor Radley, and Jack Hetherington. Now, there is a injury sign next to Victor Radley. That's because he's injured before the season. They haven't really... Um, announced that he'll be fit for round one, I don't think, but I'm pretty sure he will be fit for round one. Um, if not, I've got players I can switch out. But Victor Radley, he's only 524. He is like that 60-point player, and because they've changed the locks to middle positions, and it's now middles and edges, not uh, front row, second row locks, or second rows including lock. Um, I've chosen Victor Radley there as just a pretty, pretty solid player. Um, it, if he wasn't injured last year. He, like I, I know he was on a lot of players' teams last year. Whether or not people will forget about him this year and not pick him will be interesting to see. But Victor Adley, solid player. And Jack Hetherington, chose him last year. Solid player there when he got loaned to the Warriors. And he should be a good um, pickup this year. 322k, he should go up because he predicted to start the year for the Bulldogs in the number 8 jersey. So he should be a good buy there at very low but should average you know a decent amount not your top ends not your you know your pat carrigans who i did have in the team but switched out so i could fit some other players in um but there was a massive amount of i don't know if that will uh, fit on screen there's a massive amount of players i was looking at i won't go through all of them but just some noteworthy ones uh pat carrigan jake tavoyevich mitch barnett daniel saifidi uh, jay arrow tavita totola tina fasua malawi Corey Horsburgh, Toby Rudolph, Lindsay Collins, and Jermaine Tanoa Brown were other ones I was looking at as well. 
that Jack Hetherington is the cheapest and should probably um, rise up towards a lot of those other players' prices throughout the year and might be able to switch him out for another one. Um, a lot of these players that I've picked could also just be players that trade out throughout the year because they've gained me enough money to then be able to buy someone that is uh, worth a little bit more because I do still have that 16k as you can see just up there um, remaining in my salary cap. So, you know, a decent little front row uh, spot there of vice captain Fodawaka because he does average, if we go to the average here, uh, 59, 54 points a game, which is very solid. Um, I had him last year as well when he was very cheap. Uh, the next players are The Edge, and I've chosen Ben Murdoch Masilla and Kurt Capral. Now, Murdoch Masilla did go up in price from that um, fancy guide because he was put onto a mid edge roll went up from like 233 i think it was to 405 which is a massive jump had to kind of accommodate for that but i he's predicted to start in the second row for the warriors i think he'll have a good year um and there's a lot of wraps around him so kind of a little bit of a gamble with him he might not do too great he might not get a lot of points but i've chosen him hopefully he can do me well and kurt capel i mean he's just a solid player he's only 504k but averages 42 which is good and um this year he might have a little more game time to wait and see what happens um he was last year utility which was handy he was an edge center this year he's just an edge hopefully he'll be able to be thrown in that center as well throughout the year and um he'll be a good utility for like any fancy team to have because he um it's, it's hard for centers to make a lot of points if you have a center position that is an edge player makes it a lot easier but um i don't really think a lot of players this year are edge centers because of the way that the new system works but uh kurt capel there very happy with him other ones i was looking at you know tyson Rizal, david feeder kurt siren and sean lane um talakai but talakai is injured for the start of the year so i didn't go with him and um kurt capel was the cheapest of the couple i was looking at the other utilities for middle and the edge I was looking at were Angus Crichton, Paul Harris really tried to make him fit in the team, just didn't work with his 807 price tag. Uh, Cam Murray, Jackson Ford was another one I was, you know, thinking about getting. And the last player that I thought I did have, but I must have switched him out, was Tom Gilbert as a mid uh, edge player. I think Tom Gilbert might be a good buy for you guys if you are running short on money and you got like one position left. He is predicted to start the year for the Cowboys. He had a decent year last year, and he might be able to get you some good points and rise in value throughout the year. Now we move on to the halves. I've gone with the same half as I did last year, Jerome Hughes, a very solid player. Sometimes smashes out of the park. Quiet games, still a lot of points. And then Jamal Fogarty, which I wish I got, I wish I got last year. My mate got him when he was really cheap, and he absolutely smashed it when he came in. He's now got the 666k price tag, but um, definitely kind of worth it, I believe. He's cheaper, just cheaper than Jerome Hughes, and they both average practically the same. He is one, one point difference, which I know can be a lot sometimes, but um, I have Captain Jamal Fogarty there because I respect the Titans to also have a very good year. Um, and the Haas were a really difficult position this year to pick. Um, other players that you know are very good, to, you know, very good players to pick. It depends on which, which you preference more. Do you preference having good halves? Do you have preference get, having good middles and edges? Good hookers, good centers, or good wingers? It all kind of depends on where you guys like to put your money. I like to put my money more towards centers and um, front rows. But uh, other halves that you could have picked that were very good are people like Nathan Cleary, Daily Cherry Evans. Possibly Carl Flanagan could be a good shout. I do rate him as a player. I think he was um, kind of hard done by by the Roosters. And with I expect less, less expectation at the Bulldogs. He could shine pretty well over there. Um, other players that would be good buyers still would be people like Jack White and Kurt Mann. I'm really upset he's not a dual position. I normally buy him every single year because he's hooker and half. But this year he's only half. It's a little bit annoying. Um, but... Um, if he was the dual, 100% would have picked him. Cam Munster, who's only just cheaper than Jerome Hughes, so that's also an option. And Georgie Williams is also an option. He is the 
cheapest of the lot I had written down. Decided to go with Jamal Fogarty though, because I expect Titans to have a good year. And on the back of Jamal Fogarty, leaving the team even without a captaincy next to his name if he doesn't get captained for the Titans. The next position is the centers, one that I um, deem kind of match breakers or makers. A lot of centers don't make a lot of money. A lot of centers only make 20 to 25 points. However, these two here, possibly the most expensive ones, now there is others, but um, Zach Lomax, Stephen Crichton. Stephen Crichton had a breakout year last year. Should continue it this year, Zach Lomax. Having a goal kicker center is massive because even if you don't do a lot in the field of play, you can get two points from kicking goals. And as long as that team can score a lot of points, hopefully be able to kick a lot of goals, get a lot of points. Um, so Zach Lomax and Stephen Crichton, they both average between 35 and 45 pretty much. So, you know, solid, solid um, centers. And they do come with a hefty price tag. I think they are two of the most expensive centers. No, actually. So the centers I was looking at was Lomax, Ewan Aiken wouldn't be a bad shout. He has a um, good tackle breaker, makes points. Um, and he's going to Warriors, where he might have a better year this year. Um, Joey Manu, Stephen Crine, Franco Lee, and Curtis Scott. Only problem with Curtis Scott is his defense I'm not 100% sold on. That's why I didn't go with him. He can lose a lot of points because of those missed tackles. Um, Branko Lee, I feel like he is a good player, but he's not a good fantasy league player. There's differences, and that's also something I had to take into mind when making this team. I like a lot of players. doesn't mean they're very good fantasy league players. And trying to win, obviously, um, it's you got to make some of those decisions. And that is why I kind of had Branko Lee there, but didn't pick him. And I expect those two there to have a good year again and score a lot of points. Um, and then we move into the wingers and fullback positions. I've gone with AJ Brimson, Tom Trevojevic, and Corey Allen. Uh, AJ Brimson, I think is, everyone will be buying him this year. He's one of the top fullbacks at the end of last year. I know he only played a couple of games, but you know he went to Origin, made a big impact in Origin. Should make a massive impact for the Titans next year. He's just, he's very active in the field of play, very uh, good support player, so he should get a lot of points. Tom Trevojevic is only 477k. If you don't pick him up this year, then, you know, there's there's no real reason not to get him. I know that he's kind of injury prone, but still, if he doesn't get injured, he will go back up to those, like, 700 price tags, which, you know, you can trade out then other players and make, make some good swaps. But Tom Trevojevic, obviously a very good player, very um, solid player for the Seagulls, like AJ Brimson, pops around, always finds himself in the in the play. And then Corey Allen, switched over to Bulldogs, get the fullback role uh, when he played for the Rabbitohs, he set up a lot of tries for the Rabbitohs from that fullback position, expect him to do the same for the Bulldogs. And yeah, uh, at only 416, again, kind of stupid not to pick him, I would say because he's one of those players that could get a lot of points um, and is very cheap. Um, obviously, if you go for the other players, like your James Tedesco's, Ryan Pappenhausen, Josh Mansour maybe, um, Remus Smith was someone I was looking at, thinking he could be good, you know, he's gone to the Storm now. Storm have a history of making kind of unknown players or players with a lot of potential, just never achieved it, achieving that full potential like Branko Lee. So Remus Smith could be a good shout at only 300k. He could be a shout for a big money maker for your team. And then we move on to my interchange, as you can see just over here. I've gone with Corey Harawira and Naira um, after the last year. Um, hopefully he's found his groove at the Raiders. Should be a lot better this year for the Raiders and should go up a lot in price. Only 310k pretty cheap and a good edge um, edge player to swap in if someone gets injured. Tessie New is interesting. I've gone for the fullback if they interchange because I kind of I can't like what he has to offer at fullback. Um, at 263k he is the first choice fullback for the um, Broncos I believe. I expect him to be scoring a lot of points and hopefully he does me good, doesn't do me dirty and is able to get a lot of points. Um, they are versing Eels first. Eels, 
you know, could be a tough game for them. I expect a lot of long kicks and good returns. So hopefully Tessie New can do me well and get some points. Oh, Jack Bird, obviously hasn't played for a few years. He's a little bit injury prone. But if he can stay fit, I think he is one of these centers that can be a very strong center. Obviously, he's a big body. He might even be moving into the lock position. Um, so, I've got Jack Bird as kind of my big gamble player this year. Low in price, but could make a lot of points. And when he was fit at the Dragons and at the Sharks, he was a very good player. And so, you know, as long as he can stay fit, I think he will be a good player in the long run. Um, and Elise Katoa is the last edge player and the last interchange player I have chosen here for my kind of starting 17. Just because he played well last year. Um, he's coming off the bench, which is a little bit worrying. Don't know how much game time he'll have. But last year he was kind of starting. So he might drop a little bit of money. Hopefully he can keep the same amount of points per game. But it'll be inter interesting to see how he is rotated in the Warriors team this year. Should still be in the team, but it'll be interesting to see how much game time he does get. And then we move on to the emergency. Now, if you guys don't know how emergency works, I didn't really know until last year. Emergencies are there for pretty much, you can swap them out yourself if someone gets injured. Now, if someone's ruled out for game time, like, you know, in the warm ups, you can't make swaps then. That's when I believe the fantasy team uses the emergency, your emergency player. So, if you, even if you were away on holiday, you couldn't get access to the internet and or you just didn't want to switch your fantasy team, they take the emergency player and put him in your side, well, give the points to your side if that player, if a player didn't play in your team. That's why I've gone with only dual position players for that position and relatively cheap for their positions. So I've gone with Ben Teo. Doesn't make a whole lot of money, but still makes some money, which is the main part. He does um, money, does make some points. He averages 19. Hopefully, he can up that this year. If he can up to, you know, even 25 would be all right. Um, and he can fill in for a middle player or an edge player. You know, obviously, some things better than nothing and could even win you the game. I've gone with Connor Watson next. Hooker mid. Very good um, two options. So, you could also go in there. I'm not sure if. They prioritize it by five, six, seven, eight, or if it's just the best player that you had in emergency. So I am going to just uh, switch Connor Watson up one for Ben Teo, just in case a middle player is injured. Hopefully, I use Connor Watson over Ben Teo, at least for the first round. Um, and now I've gone with David Fusatua as an option as a center or winger fullback emergency player in case one of the centers get injured before the game or something like that um, I have an option there obviously they won't use the interchange players as that because they are already in your team so um, I want to make sure there was a center option and the last player is Scott Drinkwater as a half and winger fullback position emergency player scores pre pretty decently at 35 um, can score upwards of that as well and should have a I think a better year under Todd Payton. Um, hopefully he can score some good points and the Cowboys can put on some good games this year. But guys, that, like I said, that's my team. If you guys want to win some um, free packs, make sure you go to the description, join the link down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the league. Have fun. Let me know what your teams are. And let me know down below if you do join. Um, comment in the bottom, in the comment section, joined. And then, yeah, if you win, I'll get a contact with you and we'll, I'll send you out some free packs. So, guys, if you did enjoy, leave a like, comment, and subscribe not to miss out on anything and to be a part of the giveaway. I'll catch you next time. Peace.